You mean to tell me if Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand up for 15 years now? Like, I got somebody really attacking me right now. I mean, really going after me, man. I'm just waiting to see what God gonna do. Cause they gonna have to get on for real. Well, like, like the Steve Harvey thing, I think he might have been doing it just it move, you know, not maybe, not maybe stealing my material, you know, I, maybe giving the benefit of the doubt, maybe one of his writers did it. But they know, they, we all know whose material it is. Things are heating up in the world of comedy, with Cat Williams taking shots at some major players in the game. During a recent appearance on Club Shay Shay, Cat ruffled a whole lot of feathers by dropping the bomb on what goes on behind the stage. But he dedicated most of the interview to calling out Steve Harvey. For years, Harvey has been celebrated in the world of comedy, with some even crowning him as the unopposed king of the game. However, Cat has taken it upon himself to reveal the secret to Steve's success, and it ain't pretty. According to Williams, Steve might have sold his soul to the devil to get to the point where he is today. From stealing jokes from fellow comedians to blatant showboating and siding with the Hollywood elite, Steve's closet is teeming with skeletons. And Cat isn't making up wild accusations out of thin air. He comes armed with proof. Just what incriminating evidence did Cat get his hands on? And what sacrifices did Steve make for the sake of fame? Let's find out. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. Cat Williams and Steve Harvey have never exactly been best buds. For years, Cat has been taking shots at Harvey for stealing jokes and whatnot. Back in 2008, the beef reached its boiling point when Cat threatened to go after Steve's title as the unrivaled king of comedy. Jamie Foxx set up the stage on December 19, 2008 on his radio show, Serious XM Foxhole. He played a clip of Cat calling out Harvey where he proudly claimed that Steve's career would be over the minute he stepped into the ring with Cat, ahead of their December 31st show that year. However, Steve wasn't shaken up by the threats. Instead, he proceeded to subtly insult Cat by saying how he didn't know Cat back in the day since he hadn't been in any movies or so. Steve then switched things up, saying that he was baffled by the situation because he and Cat had long made up over a phone call. However, he wasn't going to give Cat the satisfaction of a response. Quoting his grandfather, Steve said that he had been taught that dogs only bark at things that are moving like the moon, and if the moon barks back, the dog ends up becoming famous. <laughs> Don't bark at parked cars. A dog only bark at a car that's moving and going somewhere. While Steve may not have wanted to play, Cat wasn't about to back down. He set the stage ablaze during the New Year's Eve performance, taking shots at Steve for his hair, looks, and career. That said, Cat decided to stir the pot once more during his recent appearance on Club Shay Shay. The three-hour-long interview shows Cat pulling back the curtains on the dark side of Hollywood, and his main focus was Steve Harvey. Cat started off by accusing Steve of stealing the idea of his show from Mark Curry's sitcom, Hanging with Mr. Cooper. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Cat then shifted his focus to Steve's failed acting career. Over the years, Steve has painted an interesting picture to explain why his career as an actor never took off. According to Harvey, he never had the time since he was running seven shows. However, Cat's bringing a new take on the situation. According to him, Steve was desperate for a shot at acting. But in Cat's words, the industry didn't want a potato head like him. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over KB and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have range. He also called out Steve for lying about being homeless. According to Cat, there's no truth to Steve's claims because reportedly, when Harvey was touring with Mark Curry back in the day, he was raking in a mind-blowing $3,000 a show while doing five shows a week. This is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This my thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. 
Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. Kat also stoked the fire by talking about the beef between Harvey and the late Bernie Mac. According to Kat, he too was approached for the next king of comedy. However, he ended up turning down the offer because he didn't want to end up in the same shoes as Bernie. They came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? <laughs> Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. Kat then took shots at the tour, saying that although the tour featured four of the biggest names in the industry, it was actually Steve's tour. Kat delivered the final blow by saying that Steve's career only took off once Bernie was out of the picture. Because you can't beat the best. And until you humble yourself, you will forever be kinged by the king. And because you finally did it, because you didn't have no other choice, and now that he gone, you gonna act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over on him. You thought he was black and ugly, and you were good looking, and he couldn't make it, because you did. And that ain't the way comedy worked. The king is the funniest, period, every time. Back in the day, the original kings of comedy featured the best of the best, namely Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, D.L. Hewley, and the late Bernie Mac. Together, these four men proceeded to set the stage ablaze with their comedic routines and on-point humor, gaining worldwide recognition. However, behind the scenes, despite their collective success, internal tensions ran high within the group, particularly between Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac. In fact, the rivalry between the two is why fans never got a second tour, despite the first one being a massive hit. Mac accused Harvey of stealing his material, but that was hardly the extent of what Steve had done. During an interview with GQ, Mac pointed a finger at Steve for trying to steal his role in the film. Ocean's Eleven. According to the rumors, Steve had approached director Steven Soderbergh secretly and offered to play the role at a much cheaper price. Talking about the incident, Bernie said, I heard about that. I was told about it. You know these people. Are you surprised? Tell me, are you really surprised? It's always about him. Where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? In a jarring twist of events, Bernie had a lot more to say, mostly in line with what Kat had to say about the tour. According to Mac, although the tour was meant to promote four men, it was in fact a one-man show, that one man being Steve Harvey. The reason you were supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy. It was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you gotta close if it's your tour. Bernie backed his claims by saying, go back and look at the Kings of Comedy tapes. Whenever he introduced his buddy, Cedric the Entertainer, it was all about himself. So yeah, I knew about it. Did it piss me off? Nah, you can't piss me off. You ain't that good. Not one to hold back, Steve decided to tell his side of the story during an interview in 2009. He said, I was upset at first because it just wasn't true. Me and Bernie had a lot of good times together, and then this article in GQ came out and put all this vicious stuff in there. B said he never said, I had to take him at his word for it. In another interview, Harvey clarified that he had no intentions of being a movie star. As for the allegations about him showboating, Steve didn't mince his words when he said that in this town, it's all about the ego business. Interestingly enough, Steve didn't feel like giving Bernie a courtesy call to clear the air following his GQ interview, simply because he didn't get one from Bernie when he first caught wind of the rumors. And so, against this backdrop of betrayal and backstabbing, Steve and Bernie found themselves on opposing sides. The beef between the two comedians has long been an open secret in the industry. Back in 2022, Cedric the Entertainer revealed the truth during his appearance on Club Shay Shay. According to him, Mac and Harvey never got along, calling them alpha males who didn't see eye to eye. Like Cat, Cedric's reason for turning down an offer for the original Kings of Comedy 2 was the simmering tension between Harvey and Mac. While Bernie may not be around to address the situation, his daughter, Janice McCullough, stepped up to clear the air. In a video posted on her social media accounts, Janice revealed that she never had a chance to meet Kat when Bernie was alive. But from all that she has heard, Kat seems like a stand-up person. I've ever heard my dad, you know, say he's always seemed like a stand-up dude, so I have no qualms, no quarrels with him. Um, I thought the interview was hilarious, entertaining. That man dropped so many uh, one-liners that I'm sure we are going to be wearing down to the ground 
in this year of our Lord 2024. Janice then went on to address Kat's recent interview appearance, talking about how the comedian's comments felt like they came from the heart. She said, I just really appreciate what I believe is genuine love and respect that Cat Williams showed my father. Janice then went on to say how Cat's words were proof that her father was a good man, which is why she was open to having a sit down with Williams. While Janice spoke highly of Cat during the short clip, she didn't outright address the allegations. However, fans are learning to read between the lines. According to them, the fact that Janice was willing to extend support to Cat is proof enough that Steve made multiple attempts to sabotage Bernie's career during his time alive. However, others are extending their support to Cat without mincing their words. Take Ed Lover. The legendary DJ backed Cat's words in a recent episode of his Come On Son podcast. He brought up Cat's comments during the interview, confirming that the rapper had only been spitting facts. Apparently, Ed had been Bernie's friend up until the day he died, and he heard all about the ways Steve had wronged him straight from the man himself. When I tell you one dude that has never, ever, ever changed, y'all have heard me say this before, is Bernie Mac. Love Bernie Mac. And Bernie, the stuff that he said, Cat Williams said about Steve Harvey calling to try to get Bernie's role on Oceans and that kind of stuff, Bernie told me out of his own mouth. And so Ed believed Bernie when he said that Steve hated him. Unfortunately, Bernie is not the only one who's had to bear the brunt of Steve's greed for power and fame. Mark Curry shares a similar story. The Oakland native has been accusing Steve of stealing his jokes for years now. Back in 2019, Curry cracked up the heat during his interview on The Mike and Donnie Show, where he blatantly accused Steve of stealing his material. Well, so what's up with you and Steve, man? I ain't nothing, I ain't nothing with me. He's, uh, <coughs> well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On When he was on his the, the, the talk show he had, and he did he he did all my Halloween material one Halloween. I'm watching that. Uh, somebody called me and said, man, homeboy doing your material. So he did my whole Halloween run. And I know he didn't think of it. And, uh, this this is true stuff that really happened to me. Uh -huh. And so my thing is, you don't have to do that, homeboy. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you made enough money. <laughs> However, Steve isn't having any of Mark's allegations. Back in 2020, Harvey told Mark to grow up before saying, Steve Harvey ain't been on stage since 2015. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's making stuff up, so I'm in peace. The only reason I'm commenting is because he keeps running his mouth about, now grow up. Never stole a joke in 35 years. Come to like a man and tell me what the joke is. Fortunately, Kat's recent bombshell interview allowed Mark to pick up the pitchfork once more. The comedian sat down for an interview with rapper turned podcaster Willie D on the Willie D Live show. For most of the one and a half hour long interview, Mark talked about his career. However, towards the last 30 minutes, Mark decided to reignite his decade long beef with the king of comedy. The Oakland native started off by talking about how comedians in the industry have been stealing jokes for years, putting them in a position to either defend their integrity or comfort the person who got his material stolen. Mark then talked about how he has a different way of doing things, which sets him apart from his competitors. He said he avoided writing jokes about Obama and the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's this very unique thumbprint that allows Mark to recognize when someone has stolen his material. As for why someone like Steve would resort as low as stealing his jokes, Mark said that it's not because of the money. Steve has a loaded bank account. Instead, Curry believes that it's simply because Steve wants to steal his style. Following the incident, fans dug up old videos of the two comedians that prove Cat and Mark's claims. One clip of Mark shows him performing back in 1999, only for Steve to tell the same joke six years down the line. In costumes, eight kids, please. Mama sent us down to the liquor store and put boxes on us. We didn't know what we were. I don't know what we are. I don't know. She didn't tell us. I think we UPS, I guess. I don't know. Every Halloween, I had the same outfit on. Every year. I just had a brown box. No, I wasn't nothing sad. I just not asked my father, could I have a new outfit? And he said, no, just wear the same one. And it was just a brown box. And he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. Interestingly, Steve has a few words for Cat Williams, despite the clear-cut evidence against him. He isn't taking Cat's insults lying down. On January 7th, 2024, the comedian posted a clip of himself hosting his show, Family Feud, on X, formerly known as Twitter, with the caption, you don't have to address your haters. The footage showed Harvey talking about how he's never been one to give his haters the time of day, even quoting Psalms 23, 5. You don't have to open your mouth. You don't have to do it, man. He prepares a table in the presence of mine enemies. He do it all the time. All my haters, I got. I ain't got to say nothing to them. They got TV. 
They can cut their TV on seven days a week. Steve then went on to talk about how haters are sent by the devil, only when you're effective at what you do. Towards the end of the clip, the Family Feud host said that he has someone attacking him right now. However, instead of stepping into the ring to clear his name, he's waiting to see what God has in store for him. Now, Steve never name-dropped Cat, but fans can easily connect the dots to figure out who he was talking about. That said, Steve's words won't stop Cat from turning heads in the industry with his outlandish claims. For years, Cat has spoken the truth and the truth only, not caring for the consequences. Consequences. He's compared himself to Steve as two sides of the same coin. While Cat has prioritized not selling his soul to the devils of Hollywood, he claims that Harvey did exactly the opposite. The celebrated comedian prioritized climbing the ladder of success, sacrificing others in the process. That said, he's not alone. During his sit-down with Shannon Sharp, Cat boldly claimed that Ricky Smiley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Steve Harvey are all part of a gang that makes a living by stealing the jokes of other comedians. And these dudes will run over you. I don't know if you know how both bullies operate. I but do. if you don't stand up for yourself, there really is nothing they won't do. Right. He took shots at Smiley for lying when he said that Cat would be taking on the role of Santa Claus in the 2002 cult comedy film Friday After Next, while Ricky would take on the role of money. Cat then switched his attention to Cedric, outright accusing him of stealing his jokes from the time he performed at the comedy store in 2019. He also called out Ced for not being able to sing, dance, or write jokes, labeling him a walrus without skill. Cat backed his claims by pointing out how Ced's four comedy specials pale in comparison to his 12. Williams then tied the whole thing up by saying that the fact said Smiley and Harvey have been running in the same circles for 30 years is no coincidence. In his eyes, they're all part of a mafia that thrives by giving people like him the boot. They're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But we don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for. While Cat gives off the image of a jealous rival, Steve's past provides all the evidence that fans need to believe Williams's words. Over the years, they have clearly seen Steve step on other black celebrities for his chance at the spotlight. Back when Monique landed in hot waters with Oprah for the film, Precious. She made an appearance on the Steve Harvey show to clear the air. And while the actress blasted the likes of Oprah, Tyler Perry, and Lee Daniels, she didn't spare Steve either. We got labeled as difficult because I said one word, and that was no. Now, I said no to some very powerful people. I said no to Oprah Winfrey. I said no to Tyler Perry. I said no to Lee Daniels. And I said no to Lionsgate. And the difficulty came in when people that look like me, like Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, and I gotta put my brother Steve on the list. Harvey got the ball rolling by accusing Monique of burning bridges at the start of the interview, laying the blame on her. However, Monique called out the comedian for extending support to her behind the scenes, only to switch the tables in public. And when I heard you go on the air and you said, my sister didn't burn too many bridges, and there's nothing I can do for her now. Steve, do you know how hurt I was? And so, Steve's actions paint a clear picture for fans that when it comes to picking a side between the underdog and the Hollywood elite, Steve's loyalties always lie with the powerful. At the end of the day, everyone seems to be hinting at the same darker truth about Steve. For years, fans have seen his true colors slip through the cracks. Whether it's the tell-all clips or his interview with Monique, it's clear that Steve is not the man he claims to be. And so Kat's allegations about Steve stealing jokes and stomping on the career of his fellow comedians are not mere verbal attack. They carry weight and threaten the career that Steve has worked so long to build. While Steve may be avoiding the slander by taking the high road, the future may unfold a different narrative for him. As more industry sources step forward to confirm Kat's claims, the TV show host may find it hard to maintain his silence. So, will Steve continue to sit by and watch his career unravel by the words of one man, or will he step into the ring and take on Kat's challenge? Only time will tell. In the meanwhile, keep your popcorn at hand, because as the harbinger of truth, Kat has set certain events in motion, and the drama will keep speaking spilling by the day yeah um yeah i mean as far as the whole situation with cat williams and steve harvey goes i think i find it really hilarious that when steve harvey gets called out for being a hater and there's literal proof of him hating on bernie mac trying to steal his role for a cheat trying to take his role and getting he basically said I'll do the role for like half off type stuff. Like, I don't know how much exactly it was off, but they said it was a cheaper amount that he, that he basically offered to pay the same, to play the same role. 
So that's like some sellout type stuff. Like, oh, well, I'll do that role that Bernie's not really trying to do. Like, oh, I'll do his role for 20, 50 percent less if I can take his role. Just give it to me, please. Like, bro, that's some hater stuff, bro. How are you going to go from that hating blatantly? Cat Williams is calling you out and showing examples where you've hated blatant examples where you are hating on Bernie Mac. And then your response to that is to say that, no, I don't respond to haters. Cat Williams is hating. And, you know, haters only hate when you're doing great and all this other stuff. Like, nah, bro, you're deflecting. That's what we call that comedic deflection, bro. <laughs> nah, that's that comedic deflection. You're not about to deflect your way out of this one, bro. Because Steve Harvey be trying to act serious. When he wants to be serious about something, he's serious. He doesn't call people, he doesn't call it hating when he wants to be explaining something and breaking something down. But as soon as someone's breaking him down, it's hating, okay? <laughs> so it's like, nah, bro, nah. See, now we're going to this comedic deflection. Now you're trying to deflect this, dude. Now you're trying to deflect, acting like, you know, stuff's only coming out because you're in a certain position. Like, no, bro. No. Stuff's coming out because of the way you acted and the way you treated certain people and hating on people like Bernie Mac and, you know, other people and Mark Curry stealing his jokes. And Mark Curry actually did name the joke. He said, like, it was my Halloween special. Like, he stole, like, <laughs> he stole jokes from my Halloween special. Like, he stole jokes from my whole Halloween, um, from my whole Halloween, like, set of jokes. He stole jokes from my whole Halloween joke, so. He did explain it. Um, yeah, I mean, Steve Harvey never really came off as a really, sorry, sorry. Give me two seconds. Steve Harvey never really came off as a moral guy. Sorry, I had to yawn. Um, Steve Harvey never really came off as a moral guy to me anyways. Like, I never thought Steve Harvey was a guy with really strong morals or an upstanding guy. You know what I mean? I would never call, I would never describe Steve Harvey as a down to earth guy. That's never a title I would put on Steve Harvey. You know, that's just not how I would describe him. Um, so I'm not surprised when he does something that would, that could be considered underhanded. You know what I mean? Like, or um, such as stealing people's jokes, hating on Bernie Mac, you know, just being a hater in general and just being, you know, that kind of guy, being that guy. You know what I mean? One of those, one of those, okay? He's one of those. You get what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm not surprised. I can't be surprised. You know, you enter into a fashion bargain. You're entering through a pact whereby someone trades something of supreme moral or spiritual importance, such as personal values of the soul for worldly or material benefits, such as knowledge, power, or riches, aka to enrich thyself, aka you're selling your soul to get rich. Okay, so if you're doing that, then I mean, I can't put anything past you. I've got to assume that you have no moral character at all. I have to assume that. So... Am I surprised when I see these things come out with Steve Harvey? No, because um, he entered through a fostering bargain and he was willing to sell all of his morals and everything for a worldly or material benefit. So, I mean, after you do that, I've got to assume that anything's on the table for you. You know what I mean? So, no, I wouldn't put it past him. And, um, yeah, I mean, I can see it, you know. Um, the fact that multiple comedians have came out and said, yo, Steve Harvey's a hater, for one. He's a major hater. And people who have even said they've spoken to Bernie Mac, that one dude in the video, he was like, I spoke to Bernie Mac, and Bernie Mac literally told me that Steve Harvey was hating. Okay, so you got people calling you a hater. You got people calling you a joke thief, okay? And, you know, like, it, it can't be that. It, all of these things cannot be false at once. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, bro. Like, one of these has to be true, bro. Either... Like, we know for a fact you were hating on Bernie Mac because of that role thing that you did. So we know for a fact you were hating. You were hating on Bernie Mac, bro. It is what it is. Just admit it. Just admit that you were hating on Bernie Mac, bro. That's crazy that you was hating, but admit it, bro. Um. So, yeah, he was hating on him. The jokes, I mean, that's yet to be seen. But um, we do see Steve Harvey blatantly rip off that one joke with the UPS thing from Mark Curry. Like, he blatantly ripped off that UPS joke from Mark Curry. So do I believe he stole his whole set of jokes? Yes. Like, do y'all do remember that joke where um Mark Curry, he was, like, making a joke about UPS. Like, he was making, like, a joke, like, not about UPS, but he was just making a joke about Halloween, like, and, like, not having costumes and stuff like that. And, and it, it came, like, he said something about UPS at the end. And then Steve Harvey basically twisted that same joke and said the same type of thing, bro. And he was like, oh, well, I only had a box when I was a kid. 
And uh, <laughs> they just called it UPS. Like, <laughs> like, bro, you just stole that joke, dude. Like, nah, nah, nah. You just stole that joke, dude. I just heard Mark Curry say that same thing before you, bro. Don't try to do that. Don't try to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, yeah, I already told y'all, like, do I think... I'm not surprised when I see that someone's stolen a joke. I told y'all that very few cre people are actually creative. The only creative people in the world is, like, the people who, in, like, made what, like... People who invented something. And then everyone who did something after them is an imitator. So the person who created the zip line, they were pretty creative. Now, everyone who made a zip line after them is just an imitator. They're not creative. You know what I'm saying? The person who created, like, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's so many things. Um, the person who created, like, the first wingsuit, they're really creative. The person who created the first wingsuit was really creative. But everyone after them is imitating. So everyone who creates a wingsuit after that is, an imita is imitating that. That's a fact. So, um, uh, there's just very few creative people in the actual planet. There's very few. Like, there's, like, very few. Like, think about it. Think about it. The first person who made a shoe was really creative. But that's one person. That's only one person. <laughs> one person created the shoe on their own. And then that's it. It's only them. You know what I mean? Everyone else who made a shoe after them, including Michael Jordan, is an imitator. Yes. Yes. He did not create shoes, bro. No. So... So, you know, there's one creative person who created shoes and no one else is creative enough to make shoes as a concept on their own after that. That's it. That's only one person. You know what I'm saying? You could say Michael Jordan was creative enough to make Jordans, but not to create shoes as a thing. So, you know what I mean? Jordans, Jordans, a specific type of shoe. OK, so. um, Yeah, I mean, there's many examples you could give of this type of stuff, like someone made up windows. Whoever made Windows was pretty creative, but that's one person, though, who made Windows. You know, one person thought of the idea, like, all right, we're going to get sand, and somehow we're going to turn this into a window. That guy was hella creative. I ain't going to lie. He might have been one of the most creative people we've ever seen or who've, who's ever existed. And it's just, and he's one person, by the way. He's, it's only one person, okay? Or maybe a couple people helped out with that. Because there's certain inventions that it says, it cites multiple people as the inventor of. Like, I tried to look up who invented Wi-Fi, like, internet connection, and you can't really find that out. They're, they're not trying to tell who invented that. Like, they try to say, like, 10 white people created it, you know what I mean? Like, they try to say, like, t 10 different people or something like that, but I don't know. It's mad fishy on the internet connection thing. Like, I've always wondered that. I'm like, oh, sorry. Sorry, give me a second. I've always wondered that. I'm always like, who, um, who created internet connection? Who created that so that we can actually use the internet? You know what I mean? It says, like, 10 white people did it. I don't know if I believe that. I kind of feel like it was more like an alien thing or something. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't think we created internet connection on our own. Because we got that way too early. I don't think we created that on our own, bro. That might have been part of the that deal that um one of the presidents made. I forget the president's name. Um, I forget the president's name. But he had basically, there was... I don't want to get too deep into that. It's a whole, it's a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, y'all, y'all get the point. Y'all understand the whole point of the video. Let me know y'all thoughts in the comments below. Do you guys agree with the points that are brought up in this video or do you disagree with the points that are brought up in this video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree with the points that I brought up or do you disagree with the points that I brought up in the video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, like the video. It says like 50 through 70% of y'all are not subscribed to the channel. I always say that's incredibly problematic. That is detrimental. That is awful. That is heartbreaking. Soul crushing. Okay. To see that. To see such a high number of you guys are not subscribed, but watch the videos consistently, you know? Um, if that's you, I would appreciate if you subscribed. You know what I mean? It's free. It's free to subscribe. It's free to like the video. If you support the message and you think this is a message that should get out there because it's going to enlighten the youth and push this needle forward. And actually, this is going to be a monumental shift that actually changes the future generations and changes everything that you're seeing inside this world and changes how the agendas are pushed, changes how the elites have to react to certain things because now we know about these agendas. Well, okay, then. If you agree with that, then like the video. You know what I mean? Show your support. Turn on notifications. If you got a brother, a cousin, a sister, a sibling, a mother, a daughter, a father, a brother. I just said that. Uh, if you got that, share the video. You know what I mean? We can't hold the message to ourselves. We cannot be greedy. That is called greed. We cannot do that. When you are greedy, what happens? You get closer to being just like Diddy. Once you get like Diddy, what happens? You're now doing free calls. Like, come on, bro. We can't go there, dog. You gotta stop right here. You gotta, you gotta stop that now, now. And it's, it is track in the dust, in the dust. That means you gotta recommend. You gotta, you gotta share this video to who you know. 
Like, we cannot be greedy, bro. The second you get greedy, the second you get closer to Diddy. The second you get greedy, the second you get closer to Diddy, okay? So don't do it. Don't do it. Share the message. Share it. Share the content, bro. Okay? Um. Yeah, I mean... That's really all it is to it. You get what I'm saying? I mean, Steve, Steve Harvey, you sold his soul. He ended the fashion bargain. We explained that. You know, he's still in jokes. And I'm happy that all this is coming out, man. I'm really happy that Cat Williams <laughs> exposing this stuff, man. I love to cover this stuff. I really do love to cover this stuff. This is amazing. This is like, this is very great. So, yeah, y'all. Let me know y'all thoughts in the comments below. But yeah, I'm so happy all this stuff is coming out with Cat. And Diddy, I hope more stuff comes out with Diddy, bro. I hope, like, something else comes out with Diddy. I, I hope so. I hope so. Like, something. One of these girls or someone who is around has to come out again. There has to be somebody else who can come out. Um, Or maybe um, Cassie double backs. <laughs> maybe Cassie double backs and she got more stuff on them. I hope something else happens, bro. I hope something else happens because this is definitely great to cover. Um, But, yeah, y'all. Snow's right here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Be easy, y'all.